there when uh, when David Wells pitched his perfect game in 1998. I was there when David Wells pitched his perfect game. I was there when David Wells pitched the perfect game. I was there in 98 when David Wells threw the perfect game. I was there when David Wells threw the second perfect game in Yankees history. May 17, 1998, I was there. I pitched the perfect game. Nothing better than that. That 98 season was just remarkable. Everybody played their part. They played their role. Nobody, you know, there was a hero every other night. It was a team effort for, you know, 162. That's why we won so many games. That's why we won the World Series, because we knew what we had to do, and we did it very well that year. And I went out there, I had a really bad warm-up. Mel, you know, was telling me, Boomer, you're okay, you're okay. I, I kept fighting him. Aside from what he said, he had outstanding stuff in the bullpen. Everything was really locked in, and I knew that he was going to be uh, uh, up for a strong game. I just knew deep down if I'm not, if I'm going to have a bad day, you know, I better at least go deep into the game. I commented on our walk back from the uh, from the bullpen to not get too hyped up to make his pitches. Started off just real nonchalant, slow day game. Wells, 2-2, breaking ball, struck him out swinging. Now Wells to the one, the 2-2, breaking ball, strike three is called. The pitch, Cordova takes a strike, called. Three up, three down, Wells, perfect through five. The fans are starting now to get into it, a little hum and buzz. I went in, I think the clubhouse around the fourth or fifth inning uh, to get some water in the lounge and um, I heard Michael Kay saying Dave Wells has a perfect game. I'm la 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 and I'm running out of the lounge. Grabbed my water and took off, went back, got in a, you know, got in the dugout. I remember being down in the, in the bullpen and just thinking, like, this is Boomer. I can't believe he's throwing a perfect game here. I was out in the bullpen and it's almost like you find yourself doing the same thing over and over again and you're on the edge of your seat. And not saying anything to anybody else. It was very quiet down in that bullpen. Yeah, you know, I was hitting my spots and I don't even think I, I shut Jorge off. We were so much in sync that uh, I was putting them the whatever he wanted to throw and he that's the exact pitch that he wanted to throw. You know, he just put the right fingers, put glove in the right spot, and I painted. Talking about a guy uh, being on top of each pitch. Uh, that night. You know, as it was taking place, you know, it really didn't start catching everyone's attention until, what, sixth inning? You know, after about the sixth inning, it kind of but it really hit, and then uh, you get nervous. I really got wrapped up in the game. I didn't, uh, didn't say anything to anybody. It was very quiet. You throw a pitch like that far off the plate, and it's a ball, the whole place is booing. I really didn't think about a no-hitter, perfect game, or anything like that until after the seventh inning. When it came to about the middle of the seventh inning, and everybody got a little tense and quiet about things, he never got rattled. Well, me being the, the rookie I was, I walked up to Tim Raines and said, man, you know this cat's on a perfect game? He was like, shh, rookie, you better be quiet. <laughs> David Cohn was walking back and forth, you better don't say anything to that guy. Usually I go to the pitcher after the seventh inning to see how he felt. I didn't need to go to David Wells after the seventh inning. I could see how he felt. I just left him alone and figured that if he got tired, it was going to be in another game, not that one. Here's the one-two. Breaking ball, strike three. Valentin down looking. Inside corner, strikeout number nine for Wells. He is dealing. The last perfect game for the Yankees, Don Larson. The World Series in 56. Joe Torre sat up in the upper deck, third base side for that one. The 3-2, swung on a miss, he struck him out. A pitch on the outside corner. 21 in a row for David Wells. 21 up, 21 down. Swung on and popped up. Around first, fair territory, Martinez makes a catch. 
David Wells has pitched a perfect game through eight innings. He has three more outs to go. He has been, well, he's been perfect. He has been perfect. Eighth inning, I'm looking down at Boomer, and I mean, he is about as focused as I've ever seen him. He spent most of the time down on the end of the dugout. At that point, trying to look for a conversation with somebody or talking to somebody, and they all just walked away from me. I'd sit down the next to somebody, get up, they walk away. I think the only the only person that said anything to uh, David Wells was uh, maybe David Cohn. David Cohn, you know, he's the only one that really came out and started popping off to me, telling me to throw a knuckleball. But I knew what he was doing. He was just trying to take my mind off off the situation, and you know, and it worked. And he he did he did his job, and obviously I did mine. Every one of the 49,820 standing right now at the stadium. Now one man is the object of everyone's affection. Imagine the pressure, one out away from immortality. Not many people have done this. Swung on, he's going to get it. Popped up to right field. O'Neal near the line. He makes the catch. David Wells. David Wells has pissed up perfect game. 27 up. 27 down, baseball immortality for David Wells, and the Yankees win, the Yankees win! Never thought David Wells was gonna pitch a perfect game, ever. I mean, I promise you, I could not uh, truly understand what was taking place, and how unique it was gonna be to say that I was uh, there when David Wells pitched his perfect game. And, and when he threw that final pitch, it was just no way he did it, it's just, one of the rarest feats in baseball. When that last final out was was made, uh, you know, I mean, the excitement that he showed was uh, was tremendous. I was on the bench, but I was the first guy on the field after only cut the ball. <laughs> he just quietly went about his business, and when it was over, and he threw that hat up in the air, and his teammates were carrying him off the field. I felt really great for him to see that last out, Paul Neal camping underneath it, and then you know getting. You know, getting carried off the field, that's, you know, there's nothing better than getting carried off the field. You know, you just do a perfect game. Teammates acknowledge that. That's, that's huge. What an amazing feeling, everybody running out of the bullpen and then basically jumping on them. The next day is your day. No, you, I, especially in New York. I always felt blessed to be on that team, but when he threw that perfect game, we were already one unit but it just, we just jailed even more. He was right on from uh, pitch one right to, right to the end. It was a tremendous game for, for me to watch as a coach. I was like, man, dude, how fortunate am I to be in this situation? Not only to be on one of the greatest teams, which you could tell was gonna be pretty good from spring training, but to be a part of that perfect game was just, I mean, I could never imagine that, that was gonna take place. You know, to do it and be the second Yankee you know, to, to throw a perfect game. It puts you on the map, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, you become, you know, you become a hero in New York. Every blind squirrel finds a nut. <laughs>